In this video, we're back with the Kawasaki Mule from 1993, and we're going to be removing the engine. Uh, if you need to get caught up to date from where we are, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button, and you'll be able to navigate to a playlist of the videos that uh, come before this one. So let's get started. The factory service manual suggests that we drain the engine oil. Here we are on the right side of the cart, and your engine oil drain plug is right here. You see that right in there? Right here. And here's a little sneak peek of what we're looking at. Pretty sludgy. Alright, we put the drain plug back in there and you can see the uh, the oil here. It's uh it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not the uh, not the best either. So the next thing to do is to remove the battery terminals. And these weren't very well uh, connected to begin with. Next step is to remove the battery, uh, the negative terminal there. You can see where it used to be. We had removed this in a previous video. Okay, now I've got you back on the passenger side of the cart, and I'm going to go around, uh, and we're going to remove the starter terminal leads and the alligator clips. There's that one. <clears throat> okay, so I ended up breaking one of them and I think we'll end up breaking both of them and just uh, probably redoing that wiring. And we also want to remove the igniter connector lead, which is this little thing right here. There we go. Okay. The next step is a little bit more blanket in, uh, you know, a cargo bed, seat shroud, but torque converter. Um, okay. Okay, so I guess they're referring to this case. Uh, we'll start with this. There's uh, screws that I've already removed, uh, a few of them here, in these holes, and they go all the way around it. We'll uh, remove this one right here, and then um, pull that case back, I guess. Okay, I'll let you look down in here. Uh, this is our first little glimpse of the belt here. Looks very, very loose, but otherwise maybe in good shape. 
I don't know. We'll do some measurements later on. Um, so let's see. What do we do? Let's. Uh, the next step is to remove the uh, wheel here. So let's jack this thing up, put it on a jack stand, and remove the wheel. And it seems with as the norm on this bike, if you, if you work things around enough, you can get them off. Um, so let's see here. Okay, section 404 gives uh, instructions on removing the, the uh, converter, uh, the torque converter. So uh, it looks like we're going to want to get some sort of a um, wrench with a hole in the end of it and um, and take this thing off. Uh, it's, it's, it has left-hand thread, so we'll want to turn the bolt clockwise to loosen it. Okay, and for the drive pulley bolt here, I think we're going to use a little liquid wrench on this just to loosen it up just a little bit. I don't know how bad that's going to be, but I can imagine it's not going to be fun. Okay, so what you want to do here to be able to get this uh, drive pulley uh, nut off is you want to take a box in wrench around one of these things like this right here and just kind of loop that thing there. Now that is what you're going to hold on to. Well, okay, so I needed too many hands at the time, but this right here is the sweet spot of your setup. And you see you've got your box in wrench uh, down in there that's uh, wedged against the frame here that you're just pushing, pushing toward this as you're turning this uh, clockwise. And when I did that, it, uh, it didn't take a whole lot of uh, effort at all to come right off. Okay, so I'm stuck. I've removed the drive pulley bolt, and you can see there's nothing in there. Um, but I pulled around on this thing. I put my feet against it. I've beat on it a little bit. I'm afraid to, to, to do a, lot, a whole lot of mechanical, uh, you know, persuasion of it just because it's connected to the uh, to the drive shaft. And I don't want to beat on that or mess that up. So uh, let me go research this, and we'll uh, we'll get going again. Okay, so what we decided to go with here is a triple jaw puller, uh, six inch variety, and you may can see in here, we used a bolt uh, this size right here. This actually was something that came out of one of my other uh, spreader kits that I was just trying to find something that would work on. So we're gonna apply a little torque to that and see if that will pull, if that will release the uh, primary clutch there. All right, and I'll set you up right here. And we'll see if this works. And it looks like that's actually working. So now, uh, the next thing we're going to have to do is take off the old secondary clutch here, and I believe there's another special tool for that that I'm going to have to round up. Now per the factory service manual, it's time to remove the driven clutch using the, uh, there's a special tool, the 57001-1605. It's the um, it's the, the the flywheel pulley and the holder, and what it does is it kind of sticks something in here so that we can remove this nut right here. Uh, uh, also, it, it notes in the in the manual that this is a, um, a, a right hand or a left hand thread, uh, so to remove this nut, we'll have to turn it clockwise. Little liquid wrench on there. And if you don't have an extra uh, friend or a spare hands to help you, then you may just have to uh, hold the special tool right here um, up top, and then maybe use your foot to get the uh, to get the crescent or the the socket wrench.
And now that we have that bolt off, we can uh, set it aside and remove the entire assembly of the, uh, the primary clutch and the secondary clutch. Okay, so now it's time to remove the seven case converter uh, uh, converter case bolts there, but it seems like there's one missing. So that that tells us that someone has already been in here uh, before, which is interesting, but maybe not so surprising considering the age of the unit. So uh, we'll remove the six uh, torque con converter case bolts. And now the torque converter case should just pull right off. Line up the key there. Next, we can jack this right tire up and insert a jack stand. And then remove these 17 millimeter uh, lug nuts, which mine has uh, only two of those, so my job's easier. With the wheel off, now we can remove the right rear shock absorber. The size is a 14 millimeter front and back. And to relieve some of the pressure on that shock, you know, all I did was just kind of put my foot right here and push the machine over with my body and it, it gave me enough pressure where I could get that get that out right there and you may can see what's happened here the uh whenever i whenever i knocked this shock out of the hole right there the entire assembly came up so you know i think in hindsight i probably should have put some sort of a, a jack or a, a, a stand or something here maybe even under here to kind of release some of that pressure in there And let's take a look at that bushing. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm going to put my uh, bolts back in there and the nuts to keep them secure. Uh, but before we do anything else, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with this to make, um, you know, that engine I think is going to have to come out this way. So I've got to get this back down and get this up. Okay, so I've moved my jack stand down here to where the fuel pump, I mean the fuel uh, tank uh, was or is and uh, remove the jack stand over there. It's creating a little bit more room in here, but I think I'm still going to go over there and take that jack stand out to try to just create a little bit more room in here to get that engine out. And indeed, just by jacking this side up, we're creating additional room on the right side to pull the engine out. Okay, next we want to remove the choke cable lower. And this is our choke cable, but I'm not even 100% sure where that would attach to. So if you're lucky like me, maybe yours will be broken and you can figure out what to do with that later. Uh, the next tip is going to be re to remove the uh, your throttle uh, connection right here. There we go. Now we remove the air cleaner duct clamp, which I guess would have been there. And the hoses uh, from the fuel pump, which, um, yeah, I see no hoses uh, nor fuel tanks, so we're also good there. Now it's time for the exhaust pipe and muffler, which I think this is going to be the, uh, the worst part of it right here. And then there's another piece over there that we'll have to uh, figure out how to remove. Get a little liquid wrench in here, in there, around the seal. 
And those uh, nuts are surprisingly uh, clean, which suggests that this has been off uh, recently, which is also a wonderful sign. We'll go ahead and grab those 12 millimeter nuts. Okay, so you may can see here that I finally have gotten the exhaust pipe loose. I'm not exactly sure what it was. Uh, you know, I threw some propane at it. You know, I know it's not an acetylene torch, but it, it, you know, I, I did put a little bit of heat around it. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, liquid wrench, um, a little bit of persuasion with a hammer, and actually, I think what what really made it break free was, uh, you know, I kind of got in here with a flathead screwdriver and just was, was pushing around in here. So, um, you know, I wish I could tell you exactly what it was that did that, but maybe just the combination and the determination uh, finally uh, finally broke, broke this free. So, um, you know, with that, once we, once we take off that bolt right there, this entire uh, exhaust and muffler should come out. And then from that point, uh, we're just looking at another, what is it, four? screws under there so this thing is practically taken out uh i may i may go ahead and do that um another night but uh, at this point this thing is uh this thing's uh, pretty much a done project i think i'm going to close this video up and then we'll pick back up with this uh with this motor on the table so with that thanks for watching uh if you want to see more make sure to subscribe so that you're um you've got access to that next video and uh hope to see you there